Hi my friends, I'm just giving you an update on uh, uh, for late autumn and how my papayas and everything else is going in my garden. It's the 14th of May 2021 and if you remember my last update these papayas have grown quite a bit. They are only just poking over the fence three months ago. Um, they did all this growth in only two months. But three months has passed now. It, it got quite cold after two months and, and the growth basically just ground to a halt. So yeah, did all that growth in two months. And this last month they've hardly done anything. But yeah, as you can see they've come along quite well. That last update I, I, I showed you how I gave them a, a good top dressing of dynamic lifter. And they love that stuff. That just really kicks things along. So that'll give you an idea how well that dynamic lifter works. It's still late spring, but I've already done my spring update. So I'm going to have to put this in with the summer update. But yeah, you might find it interesting. You'll be able to compare this with how things go further into summer. It's um, the 14th of February, 2021. Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day lovers. And I really do have to film today because I've got some fruit to pick on my dragon fruit. And I want to show you my dragon fruit before I pick them. But yeah, this is this is how the papayas are going anyway. They've come along a bit. They haven't grown as, as fast as I was hoping. And that's because I wasn't giving them any dynamic lifter. I couldn't afford to buy any dynamic lifter for a while. But um, yeah, I've just pulled the car out of the way. And I've got some dynamic lifter now, finally. Those brown bags are at the bottom. And there's another one there. That's the stuff that really gets them growing, hey? That really kicks them along. The liquid fertilizer is good. And it's good for getting extra nutrients that you need, extra trace elements. But this dynamic lifter, you know, it really does lift them up. It kicks them along. So that's a real heavy furt. Give it a heavy hit. It's ready for it now. It should be able to take it now. So yeah, I've just piled it up. It's, it's a few inches high there in spots. Wherever I could fit it, you know. Without it just rolling off. Down on the ground below. So yeah, it's quite heavy. Without putting the fertiliser on the stems. Well, there's a tiny bit on the stems, but hopefully that won't be too bad. It's hard to avoid when you're trying to get a lot of fertiliser there. And like it's, it's almost in piles really. You know, it's pointed cone-like piles in spots. To just get the maximum amount of fertiliser I can there. On that edge and that's going to give it a good punch. A good punch along. Yeah, so that's all ready to roll now. That fertiliser, it should take off, I'm hoping. Over the next couple of months, you're going to see a marked improvement. Fingers crossed. But yeah, we're in the subtropics here, so growth just grinds to a halt now. The temperatures have been down to, oh, well, we've had some nights down to 13, 14 C. And, and that just really conks everything on the head. Everything just slows right down. But it will get colder. Once it, I found once it gets under 11, pretty much when things get under 11, growth just really stops dead then. And then, you know, we, we get temperatures under 11 for a couple of months. 
and the papayas and other tropical trees start to get a bit sick but then usually they come back because we only get a couple of months of that really cold weather but yeah that's how they're looking I've just got one bit of an attack from the fruit spotting bug so I'm going to get onto that right now but I haven't had too many problems with fruit spotting bug now I hit him with the permethrin about three or four times over last spring and summer and um, that's all I've had now is this, this one papaya got hit and I don't know if you can see well that yellow leaf is a sign that's more of the fruit spotting bug you might see how it's kind of sad looking on the stem there and get it into focus yeah a bit hard to get it to focus there's another spot there you see that there that brown spot on the stem fruit spotting bug and the moment you see that it's good to just start spraying with permethrin because if I let that go it's going to go through all my papayas so I, it seems there's not many of those bugs around they're really sneaky little blighters they hide when they see you coming so you basically never see them you just see what they do but yeah if I ignore that it's going to go through all these papaya over the next few months so I'll get on to that right now and you can see yeah you can still see a bit of the dynamic lifter there it's sort of caked on top there it's it's still helping it's still this slow release it's one of the good benefits it's slow release nutrients so yeah I put that down three months ago and it's still giving them food every time it gets watered that nutrient is washing down into them but that's starting to thicken up hey the, the stems and the trunks of these plants starting to thick up, thicken up and look alright and no fruit yet unfortunately I was hoping I might get a bit of fruit but there's a lot of flowers coming out and it is hard to tell what's going on with these bisexuals especially when they first flower they all look very male but you know with some luck hopefully they're all going to flower they're all going to produce fruit just some will produce better than others so some might will still get the chop soon probably and I just see which are the best producers let's give it a bit more time hopefully spring and I'll start coming on and yeah that's my sprayer there got that ready I've got um, a mixture of permethrin a little bit of um, a little bit of sea soul and some liquid copper in that so I will be just spraying these make sure to get it up especially up under those leaves I'll just adjust that, adjust that jet a bit too That's a bit better, a little bit better, there we go, get that permethrin in there, we've just had a big rain so hopefully there won't be any rain anymore for a while, I'm just try and get it all up there mostly on the under surface surfaces and the stems and with some luck that hangs around for a while that that permethrin especially if it doesn't rain especially with no rain that can hang around for three months even and will continue to kill fruit spotting bug 
So yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of an idea what I do. And I'll do some more of that later. I'll just show you that for now. And uh, yeah, my custard apple. Uh, nearly all the fruits off. The last three fruit are left out. I just get my breath back. <sighs> yeah, I'm down to the last three fruit on this custard apple. And when the fruit come off, well then it's ready. I've got room to plant it in the ground now. So ideally, as soon as it finishes fruiting, it'd be nice to get it in the ground. But for me, it's going to be a big job because look, look at the size of the pot. Well, you know, once I could do it easy, but now it's going to be a pretty major job for me. I've got to try and cart that thing around the backyard and, and prepare a hole for it. But oh, it's sure going to be nice to do it because, because as soon as I do that, I'm going to start getting some... This tree is going to really start to grow and it's going to give me a lot of fruit. So there, yeah, that's one of the last fruits there. That'll be falling off very soon, I think. And just yesterday, a fruit fell off almost right in front of my eyes. I, but yesterday, uh, there was four fruit on it, and then I just sort of turned my head for a moment, and one of the fruit dropped straight off. So yeah, that's, that's one of the smaller ones. This will probably take longer. Hopefully that's going to stay on for a bit longer yet and get a bit bigger and also this one Although that's grown quite well just lately It's more than doubled in size this last few weeks But I'm hoping that'll stay on and get bigger too yet And yeah, especially that one and this one. I think that one's about as big as it's going to get Won't be long before it'll fall off and yesterday there was a fruit about the same size that was growing right beside this little one and it fell off when I ate it last night very delicious so yeah I can't wait to get this one in the ground and as you know if you follow my other videos I've got a few seedlings from that custard apple and this is a Paxton prolific KJ Pink's custard apple which is unbelievable, I think, in my own opinion. And, and the experts, many of the experts are saying it's the most promising custard apple in Australia today. And it is, it's, it's amazing. I've got a review on the fruit actually coming soon. Or maybe it's already on, on YouTube. I've, I've got a backlog of videos actually, but I've got a review of eating the fruit that's coming soon, it's ready to upload soon it might be on YouTube already by the time you see this or if not it will be coming not long after and yeah the fruit are exceptionally sweet like they are so sweet sweetest custard apples I've ever tried by far and I was trying to compare them like what fruit is sweeter than these Paxton prolific and I struggle to think of, of a fruit that is sweeter you know um, on in the review I was saying grape a grape is about the only fruit that I can think of that's sweeter than these custard apples but actually I was just thinking recently persimmons they're pretty sweet that's quite a sweet fruit but maybe a persimmon sweeter but maybe, I hope you get the idea what I'm trying to say is these are exceptionally sweet fruit and uh, they're supposed to be very heavy bearers self-pollinating so this tree could be great when I get it in the ground could really come up nice and on my veggie garden I've got that mammy there it's just come along it didn't do anything over spring well winter it almost died spring it just really just struggled even the first half of summer it hardly did a thing 
and then then in the last half of summer it put out this new growth it's looking quite all right now but I imagine this cold is going to start slow well it stopped growing since it got cold it hasn't grown for a month but I imagine another month or two of this cold and it's going to start getting sad and unhappy again but hopefully I'll be able to keep it alive and yeah I've got these couple of custard apple seedlings of the Paxton Prolific and I've got some more around the side of the house there and I've planted some more seeds I've got a few seeds of that now they're going to be very promising trees the veggie garden has grown very slow this last few months because we've just had so much rain and, and I've hardly ever seen this garden grow so slow actually because as you know if you've been following my videos it's, it gets very little sun anyway it's that bit of sun there sort of just a few hours the sun gets in on this garden and we've had so many wet rainy days it hasn't even been getting that sun but this last month we're getting more sun so even though it's cold the veggies don't mind a bit of cold and everything's sort of coming along not too badly now it's, it's starting to fill out and I've been getting a few nice salads not too many it's been slow but I've been getting a few you'd be surprised how much I can get out of that when I start picking and the, even though these veggies are small they they come back quickly and this too I'll just point out again this um, salon spinach that's some sort of playing tricks with it isn't it but up the back there that salon spinach then I've got it's running up the, um, the mesh I've got there that is really worth having a really good vegetable to have in your garden just grows so easily once you've got a few you'll, you'll never be without because they seed so you get more and perennial spinach when the Philippines I think they just call it climbing spinach a really worthwhile vegetable to be growing you know you can get this grow this just about anywhere no matter how short of space you are you can get it to run up the side of things up the side of fences or your house or, and um, yeah I pull a lot of leaves off these already and, and now they're growing up the mesh so you know it won't be long and, and just like I've shown you before that all that mesh there will just be thick with salon spinach all going well although this is seeding early these are new plants that are going to seed early but if you look here like just there see there's old seeds from the old plants that were growing they're still hanging there and that's how these new plants grow grew from the seeds so you know I'm not I'm not short of seeds and they're always springing up and yet really worth having a really worthwhile vegetable and quite juicy too quite a juicy vegetable and yeah there's a few other bits in there some I got it had a grub attack too actually just recently has chewed back that um uh, kale a bit quite a bit <laughs> but it'll get over it if I just keep the grubs off and I've got a lot of little seedlings there that's parsley I threw some parsley seed in there so you know I can hammer this garden hard and the more I ha hammer it the more light will get through to the parsley so you know I should be, be won't be long I'll be getting more salads out of this I'll be getting a few salads a week easy at the moment I'm not quite getting that I'm probably getting maybe one salad a week now the basil's been doing well I've, I've hacked that back that's grown twice as tall a couple of times I've never seen the sweet basil grow so tall actually so yeah it's grown double that height see and I've, I've cut it right back a few times because it's getting so high it's shading everything else out so 
So I've been hitting the basil hard. And I really like basil. I find I can put a lot of that in my salads. And it's just nice. It's just really nice. Nice stuff. Oh yeah, I've got a sour sop there. It's a small one of my smallest sour sops. But it's the only sour sop getting good sun at the moment. Um what else can I show you? My Marcot cutting up there, the wine gold papaya. See that's a chip off the old block there off that big the wine gold. It's it's adapting well there. So I've pulled it right down so it really sticks out into the sun now. And even though it's the winter sun, it gets a lot of good sun now. So and it's putting out a few flowers. Although it dropped one fruit, unfortunately. Well it didn't get much bigger than that one there, but, but hopefully it's gonna hold some fruit soon. There's something a little funny about the leaves. I'm just not quite sure what's going on there. It's always a good sign to just watch what your leaves are doing. They might need nutrients. Well, hopefully when I spray it with this permethrin with the copper, the liquid copper, that'll help. It might even be a little bit of leaf curl going on there with that one leaf in particular. You see there, that one leaf. It's kind of looking a little strange. Getting a few leaves like that on that plant this last couple of months. But it should get over, fingers crossed. Just keep feeding it up and yeah, I'll give it a hit of that permethrin li li liquid copper tonight. And it should get over it. Dragon fruit, I didn't get much of a fourth crop this year. Last year I got four crops. This year the fourth crop I only got two fruit. There's one there. Might be still about another month away or a few weeks. There's one fruit up there too. Where is it? There. There it is, yeah, just two fruit in this fourth harvest. Which is a little disappointing. I think it was the weather actually. I, I didn't get a flush of flowers all coming out at the same time like I, I do normally. There's been so much rain and the flowers were really intermittent. Like over about six weeks, there was just a, you know, a few flower, two or three flowers would come out. Then a week later, another two or three flowers would come out. That's sort of how I was doing it. And I held off. I, I didn't get my bugs out like I normally do when there's a good flush of flowers. I get my um, some rotten fruit out so the bugs pollinate it the flowers for me and I didn't do that with these because it was so intermittent and I was just waiting for that nice big flush of flowers and it just never came so yeah this last these last two flowers I got the bugs out and sure enough the fruit set see that's the big secret for me here anyway to get those flowers setting fruit because it is a bit difficult to get up there. And I've, I've never tried to pollinate by hand with a, with a brush. I, I've seen it done on U YouTube now. I, maybe I should try it. But for me, it's just, uh, I, I am a bit of a lazy gardener, especially now with my bad health. So I find I just get a bag of old rotten fruit and let it sit next to these flowers for the night the night they come out it works a treat it works a charm and you let the bugs do the pollinating for you and all the fruit sets so yeah what next I'll try and keep this moving quick so I've got a lot to show you ah yeah this this was one of my more promising papayas my Thai Dwarfs. So I got a couple of nice big fruit off it last year. <laughs> Maybe I can cut in to just show you.
but it got hammered by the fruit spotting bug last year, sort of late winter, early spring. And then also the flying foxes really hammered it too and really knocked it around and knocked leaves off it. And But it came back really good over, it, it was looking nice until just recently. See here now, and, and that whole top has been snapped off. See, and it was putting out fruit. How many fruits there? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fruit were, were forming on this, forming quite well. And it was a flying fox in the middle of the night. I think because I chopped my um, uh, ice cream bean tree down, the big ice cream bean tree, and they're a bit desperate for food. So I've never seen this happen before, but the flying foxes are hammering my papayas, not just eating fruit that's virtually green, but they're also they're sucking on the flowers. I've never seen them do that before. They must be just desperate for food. And they're so rough, they just don't give a damn. So these flying foxes have been sucking on the flowers, the papaya flowers, and they've just snapped that top clean off. It's just so disappointing. And it'll come back, but, but that's the end of it now for another season. No more fruit will be coming on that until, you know, it's months away, eight months away. Something like that before it'll be set trying to fruit again. So yeah, that's a pity. And uh, this one, this is the Hawaiian Gold. I've caught them up there quite a few times. But luckily this is tough enough to handle it. You see those flowers? I've caught the flying foxes up there. Just sucking on those flowers. And quite rough. Oh yeah, and actually now I've zoomed in, you see that black bit of a streak on the stem? That's fruit spotting bug again. I'm glad I saw that zoomed in, you can see that. I have noticed there's a bit of fruit spotting bug. A little bit of damage to my fruit. So they're just coming back again. I've got to spray that for fruit spotting bug too. But yeah, those damn flying foxes, luckily, or well, they've sort of twisted that top down. It's almost hanging upside down now, because they've been hanging off it so much. And as you remember, it's, it's, it's horizontal, that branch, but it's even dipping down now, because those flying foxes are getting into it. And they, they've beat me to about four or five fruit. I've got to pick them quite green at the moment. The first flush of colour I have to pick them, otherwise the flying foxes will get them. So that's a pity, but still, you know, it's still nice. I'm still getting, oh, I'm getting three or four fruit every week out of that bunch there, which is very nice for this time of year. Uh, oh yeah, this has come along all right. This was just a wild seed. It just sort of just pokes out where I park my car here. Usually the bumper bars push right up against the stem. But it seems to be in the right spot. I've given it a bit of mulch and fertiliser over summer, so it should come up quite well, I think. It's in a spot that's not going to bother me, so... Oh, you might find this interesting too. We get it after rain. A lot of um, it's a little mushroom that that grows here after rain. I think the um, the sugarcane mulch. I think it comes from the sugarcane mulch actually. The spores. Don't know if it's edible. I certainly wouldn't try it. Unless someone could positively ID it for me. They, they don't get very big, these little mushrooms. So they tend to be around that size. I haven't seen them grow all that much bigger. 
Oh, and they'll dry out. I guess that's maybe a reason too. It dries out pretty soon once the rain stop and they die. Um, pomelos are doing quite all right. I've potted them all up now. All my pomelos that I raised from seed. They wouldn't mind a, a spray of permethrin as well, I think. But yeah, they're kind of looking. They get hammered by a grub. But again, the permethrin has really helped. Really helped for these things to get a lot more healthy. You see that leaf there, that's sort of a sign of what that grub does. It's a stripy grub. But yeah, it wouldn't mind a bit of permethrin there. But that's the best they've looked for a long time in those new pots so they're coming along quite well and they don't seem to mind winter too much they get more sun here in this spot during winter and yeah another i think that's another kg pinks unless it's a persimmon i'm not sure what persimmons look like even but the leaves are slightly different. Got another one there. I, th I think that's a KJ Pinks. But yeah, this one, I think that's the one. It's always looked a little bit different. I guess you'll get, get that with seeds. You will get a little bit of variation. But I did plant a lot of custard apple seeds and also a few persimmon seeds. So I do wonder, I think it's that one, there's one here that I've often wondered if it's not even a custard apple. Um, oh yeah, with this, um, these damn fruit bats breaking my trees, they've knocked, I've just got them there piled up, I don't know if you can see very well, but they knocked three branches off my Hawaiian gold as well. There's three main stems that they snapped off my wine gold. See, look how bare it is. It's looking quite bare now. There was a stem out to the left from the top there that had a fair bit of fruit just broken off by the flying foxes trying to suck on the flowers. And there was another stem in there. They kind of did me a favour with that. I, I did want to take a mark on it and get it out of the way so I can get more sunlight to my uh, um, tie, dwarf tie there. It wasn't getting enough sun there for a while. But then it got too cold to take a mark on. And the flying foxes broke the branch off anyway. <laughs> so they kind of did me a favour there, I guess. But yeah, three stems have been snapped off from the flying foxes. And I'm worried about that stem. You know, if I had more steel and, and stakes, I would stake that up and that branch up just to be sure. Because I'm worried the flying foxes are going to snap them off as well. And uh, luckily, they seem to have gone away. Maybe they've found another food source. So fingers crossed they won't come back. I'll stay away for a while. So yeah, I've got that branch. Remember that branch is horizontal. So I've got those two stakes holding it up. And yeah, I get a lot of fruit off that head there. Normally. And yeah, the flying foxes have got about three or four of them off me. Just this last month or so. But I'm still doing all right, I guess. Because I, I just wish the flying foxes would stay away from those flowers. Because, oh, they could, when you see what they could do, they could just wipe out my entire papaya crop. I'm just lucky there's not that many around. Well, there's too many, but it's not as bad as some areas. I was out near Kippering not long back and I was just looking at clouds of the damn things. Flying foxes. And I feel sorry for anyone living out there. 
you wouldn't have a chance with a fruit tree. Oh yeah, I'll give you a better look. This is my most promising, or one of my most promising Thai dwarf red papayas at the moment. And a fruit just fell off that yesterday too. And I've got it on video, so I'll cut in and just give you a look at that. A nice big red fruit. This, I've got this uh, another dwarf red here. And it has just dropped this fruit today down here, which is quite a good size, eh? Hey? And uh, I put a bag over this to protect it from the flying fox, and it's worked. So, not a bad size. I'll be eating that very soon. Yeah, it just came off this one. And more to come soon. Look at the curve it gets in it. It kind of gets a real banana shape to it. Sometimes, this fruit. This is the next fruit coming. This will still be a fair way away. Mightn't even get that fruit till spring. You see, it gets quite a banana kind of shape to it. Sometimes these fruit, but yeah, they can be very nice. So yeah, that's one of my more promising dwarf Thai reds. Pity that leaf's in the way. So there's a few fruit there coming on. And it's enjoying that sun now. Got, it was getting too much shade in summer. And it's getting a nice bit of winter sun now. Yeah, but yeah, disappointed that that one snapped off. Anyway, I'll give you a look at the back. I haven't shown you out there for a long time. So... I've been doing a bit of clearing just lately. I've got these sour sops here. These are my advanced sour sops. They all really need to go in the ground too. And I've got room to plant them now. So I'm just going to have to find the time and the strength to do it. But they got—they were getting too much shade over summer too. They, they were in full shade. and I cleared some of this jungle just recently. So there is a bit of winter sun getting into them now. Hopefully just helping to adjust to sunlight again. That's the plan. Get them used to some sunlight and then hopefully put them out in this new spot. Which is very sunny. Actually they should love it out there. So I adjust them slowly. Get them adjusted to the sunlight slowly. So yeah, it was, it was just gone. Out the back here has just really got away on me. The jungle has just been closing in on my papaya. There was a lot more that I've cleared that a bit of that back yesterday, a couple of days ago. It was a lot worse. It's, it's, it's getting too thick, much too thick. But hopefully I'll tame it over winter now. Things will grow a lot slower. You see there, I've chopped back a lot of growth. Oh, I had my mate helping me with that more than a year ago, but now he's gone. It's up to me again. And like just chopping them out's hard work, but they really need to be chopped out and killed. Just chop right back. That's a, um, a native mulberry tree. Which is interesting, but oh, it just wants to get too big. I used to be able to trim it as a hedge years ago, but now it just gets away on me. It just grows too quick. I'm just not fit enough to keep trimming it. So yeah, all that's got to go soon. I'll be chopping that out. Just hanging it over in the neighbor's yard and 
annoying them, they don't like that. You couldn't blame anyone for not liking that. And yeah, I got a, um, oh, I hope I've still got a dwarf avocado there that's about 15 feet high under all that growth. Maybe not, maybe I've left it too long under that growth. But I'm hoping and if I can get in there over the next few months, clear all that growth back, it won't be long before that'll turn into a nice tree. A dwarf avocado that you can't see at the moment, but it's in there, trust me, it's in there. <laughs> and yeah, I've still got a few of these papyri in pots. I would like to plant them in the new spot as well, but oh, they're so pot bound now. And they, they are still, but you know, if I get on it soon, potentially they can still do all right and bear me a bit of fruit. But I've got to do it soon, or it will be too late. It is sort of all getting away on me. But as you can see, these papaya here have grown well. That's um, a seedling of the Hawaiian gold. It's putting out a lot of fruit. That's my most promising one. But um, I'll show you some bad luck with that one though. Is my most promising. You see there, I had to chop it back last year because of fruit spotting bug. And but it's got over that now. Yeah, putting out a lot of fruit. But now the damn thing. Look at this. It's got some rot in the stem. And I've prepared this for you. I've cleaned this back. To show you what I'm going to do, I've sort of cleared, cleaned all the rot out. There's a good chance I'm going to lose it. It even goes down a few inches under the ground. The rot, a, you know, I'd, be, I'd probably be lucky to save this tree. <coughs> but I've made up this stuff. I'm going to put this on now. I'll show you. This is a mixture of dolomite. And copper oxychloride. No, is it copper oxychloride? Um, cubic hydroxide. Sorry, cubic hydroxide. A very soluble form of copper. It's good for fighting disease. And yeah, I've made a paste. And I've added a bit of sea salt as well. And it's mostly dolomite lime. It's about what's that? It's about a liter. That's a two-liter ice cream container. About half of it's dolomite lime, and I've added about oh, 30. I just threw it in, I didn't measure it, but there's roughly about 30 grams of cubic hydroxide in that, and a little bit of sea salt as well. Oh, about 50 ml of sea salt, and this is pretty much this tree's only hope. So Fingers crossed, this stuff is going to help save it. And also, I've just got to stop watering because these things can take a lot of dry. So, so anyway, I'll get that stuff down deep. And paste it on, look, and that will dry, and that will help dry it out. When that's about its only chance, I'm seeing now I maybe don't quite have enough. We shall see. Yeah, it's kind of like a paste, a sticky paste. And maybe, maybe this can save it. Let's see. Let's see, I'll keep you updated. But there is a good chance this tree will just shit itself before long, just one day I'll come down here 
and it'll virtually die overnight and I'll lose all that nice fruit see it's just really wanting to put fruit out hey eh? the top of the plant is not really showing any signs of, of this problem at all but it will soon Well, yeah, fingers crossed, a dolomite, that's a dolomite lime, and copper oxychloride, no, I said it wrong again, didn't I, cupic hydroxide, you can buy that at Bunnings, it's a good fungicide, Oh, that's almost all of it, isn't it? Yeah, we'll let that dry, that paste, and hopefully that'll dry out and kill that rot. Because, yeah, it's got a rot in the stem. What a bummer. My best tree. My best new tree. Oh, and I did want to show you, actually I was going to use, I haven't really got enough now, but this old wine gold, hang on, I'll, I'll switch off and just get my breath back. Yeah, I tried to make enough of that paste for this old wine gold. See, it's had this going for years. There's been a bit of rot in the stem, but it hasn't bothered it. it. Hasn't seemed to have bothered it. But it will appreciate some of this stuff as well. So I find, I think there's, there's ants in it. So that helps. And, and it, I, just, I just had a dig around there too. And oh, gee, oh, oh, oh. some parts are not too good. But it's not as wet as that other one, it's it's drier. And I think the ants help it even actually. And it's a bit wet there actually. A bit wet and mouldy. Yeah, that needs some of this paste. Oh, gee, it's in there too. I need some paste in there. Oh, it's quite wet there. See, that gets a bit of overspray from my hose too. Which doesn't help at all, I think. They don't like that. But... Hopefully this will help to keep it alive for a few more years. Yeah, I don't really have enough. Oh, it's not helping when I'm dropping it either. And it's not really good to touch this stuff. Like too much copper is not good for the body. So I'll just switch off and I'll get a a glove so I can put this on better. Try and get the, a smear of the last of what I've got here on all this wound. Yeah, I've put a rubber glove on. I can get some more mileage out of this stuff. Just get it into those wounds. I really 
do need to make some more, I guess. Yeah, but this has had this wound for years. And I can see now it has grown a bit. But it's been no real problem. It just tends to survive. It's a very tough tree. I guess it was big and strong before this problem occurred. Whereas that other one around the side, the tree's younger, oh, and the wound's much worse too. It's much bigger compared to the tree. And you can see it's soft. It's soft and like rotting. The trunk. So it's a lot more urgent. I really hope I can save that younger tree. Because it was supposed to be the, uh, the next generation taking over for me. Once, you know, this one will die out eventually, I guess. This one is at least seven years old. Yeah, so that other, I can save that other one. Well, that's not a bad cover though. I've given this a fairly good cover. This should make a big difference, I think. Because it wasn't too bad to begin with. It is already kind of dry. And I think those ants were helping it too. Sometimes ants can be a good thing. Well, a few ants. Although, there's, you know, this, this yard gets tends to get too many ants but they keep the termites down and they do help with some bugs within reason well hopefully if I've got time I'll show you my larger black sapote at the back it's um the ants are hurting it there's just too many ants attacking it it's got a lot of mealy bugs It needs um, permethrin too to get rid of the ants. But anyway, that's not a bad cover, eh? Not too bad. That might be all it'll need for a while. I'm just try and remember to not let it get any splash from the hose. That's what's been doing it, I think. Getting a bit of overspray splash when I hose it on a regular basis. It's just started rotting it. Oh, trying to get this glove off <laughs> with one hand. Okay, I'll just get my breath again and I'll try and show you some more of this yard before it gets too dark. <sighs> 